In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, how are you everybody? I hope you will be doing good. Um, my name is An Aysakib, I'm your IELTS teacher, IELTS mentor, and IELTS trainer. We've started with the speaking subtest of the IELTS, and, uh, and it was uh, the overview which we gave in the first lecture. Then we talked about uh, one of the four major components of speaking subtest of the IELTS, that was uh, fluency. Today, our main focus is on pronunciation. Uh, pronunciation actually is the clarity of expression. Whatever you're speaking should be thoroughly understood by the examiner. Lots of candidates and lots of ill-informed teachers or the IELTS trainer confuse it with accent, whereas it has nothing to do with the foreign accent. If you can't speak like British, if you can't speak like Americans or Kiwis, um, the people living in New, New Zealand, or Aussies like Australians, no problem. Pakistani accent is fine, provided you speak uh, pretty good, fluent, and uh, you are thoroughly understood by the examiner. Mother tongue influences, no problem at all. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, if you speak with uh, MTI, it is even Stephen or it is acceptable for the examiners. But it will not make any uh, bad impression for the examiner in giving you the band score of the IELTS, I mean to say. Um, then the examiner is actually giving you uh, or assessing you uh, regarding the IELTS pronunciation factor. So first of all, he will see your word pronunciation. If you speak words properly with, with uh, the universally accepted pronunciation, no problem. And the word should not be uh, wrongly uttered. For example, if it is uh, chaos, it should be chaos. It not, should not be chows because a student came to me and uttered this word. When I was in my office, I was still in the class. So he came to me and said, sir, there is a chaos in the class. When I asked him what? So he gave me the spellings and then told him it is chaos. It is not chaos, meaning thereby disturbance. And it should not be canal digi. It's, it's knowledge. And thirdly, for example, chemistry, not chemistry, it's chemistry. If you speak these words, and your accent is not like the British accent, no problem. You will still be given good band score. As far as the second important thing is concerned regarding this pronunciation is individual sounds. Uh, for example, these sounds should be very much clear. And uh, regarding the uh, aspirated and non-aspirated sounds, for example, where you use uh, p, not p. P, T, K, Ch. Sometimes you use P, T, K, Ch. Not P, T, K, Ch. So it depends. It's the teacher who lets you know where to use P and where to use P. These are the rules of actually aspirations. Aspirated sounds and non-aspirated sounds. If you know about them, your English would be really sounding good. It would be beautiful to listen to you. These words will be jingling in the mind of the teacher and you will yourself be impressed. You are speaking very good English if you want to start your practice of speaking under the, uh, under the guidance of a good teacher whose uh, English is also very close to the native speakers. Then intonation. Intonation is also an important factor of pronunciation. It means rise and fall of the tone. Sometimes it rises, sometimes it falls. So it's very natural. Uh, it, it also creates uh, beauty. It also creates uh, musicality in English. So intonation um, gives you a pretty good expression. Uh, you speak in a very, um, you know, uh, musical way and it sounds good for the examiner. And last but not the least is uh, word linking. Yeah, the words should be linked together um, properly. It's, these are not the linkers uh, in which the sentences are joined or combined together with the help of linkers. These are little words which actually, word linking is 
the two words when they're linked together they also create uh, music of english the the word link example uh, cheer up anna cheer starts with the c h and ends with e cheer when some word ends with a consonant sound and the following word starts with a uh, you know vowel sound so they are linked together beautifully to create the music of english cheer up anna not an office when you're writing these uh, it, this collocation it should be uh, an office so like this if you link the words together beautifully they also create a create charming sound so if you keep all these things in mind and speak pretty good to impress the examiner he will be convinced to give you the good band score of the IELTS and uh, in, in speaking a subtest of IELTS especially because you are appearing in the speaking test and we talked about all these things pronunciation has its connection with the speaking so if you speak good with a with acceptable pronunciation definitely examiner will give you a good band score all the best and once again reminder if you haven't subscribed to our channel uh, Genius Institute Lahore, please do subscribe it right now. It's a high time. You will miss this opportunity because we are online teaching and training you the IELTS basics and fundamentals. Best of luck. God bless you all. Thank you very much indeed. Bye-bye.